very good morning you know whenever i have been taking sessions on uh, this issue of uh, adolescence teenage either to parents or to teachers or to counselors they start with the understanding that adolescence is a biological phenomenon somewhere around 10 11 12 13 years a child goes transits from being a child to becoming a adolescent it's a biological phenomenon what we call as puberty coming of age menarche etc with girls it is very very obvious the day the child has her first menstrual period you know that she has become an adolescent with boys it's not a one day thing but within a few weeks you will see a change there's a spurt in his height his shoulders broaden he has facial hair his voice cracks so you know that this child is now headed for uh, and is becoming an adolescent. So both ways, boys and girls, the phenomenon of transiting from a child to an adolescent is very, very clearly defined. And as people interested in human behavior, families, children and all that, what we do is we look into the emotional and social aspects of adolescence. There are doctors and gynecs and all these people who will tell you about the medical aspects of uh, the adolescence. But there is an equally important emotional and social aspect. The behavior changes, attitudes change, sometimes value systems uh, change, how they connect to each other changes. In a lot of cases, academics uh, academic uh, progress and academic performance uh, changes so like that you will find that there are a lot of uh, changes that take place beyond the medical and the physical okay if you can deal with those which i'm going to quickly run through in a little while once you deal with that you are helping this child go through successfully that phase of being a child on one side and being an adult on the other side. This transitory phase, the child successfully goes through and then moves on to becoming an independent adult. Now, the question that I ask in my sessions also is, though transition from childhood to adolescence is very, very clear, what about the transition from adolescence to adulthood? How and when does it take place? How would you define that this child is no longer an adolescent? The child has become a mature adult. Very few people have any answer. The standard thing is what we take is teenage. So as long as the child is 17, 18, 19, you say that he's an adolescent. The moment he is 20, then you say that now he has become, you know, gone beyond it. Or from the legal point of view, 18 years is when you become an adult. And they say that, okay, when a child becomes 18, he's independent, he's got his own ways and means, he can do whatever he likes, he's become a citizen. But when we deal with it in the emotional, social, interpersonal angles, there's no such thing as 18 being a cutoff and suddenly you become an adult. Or moving from teenage to 2021, 20, you can say that this person has become an adult. No, it doesn't work that way. So, to start off uh, uh, with, let me you know uh, go back to understanding what I always emphasize on that adolescence is that phase of life where a child starts looking for an identity. Till the child comes to adolescence, till his hormones are activated and still, till he starts looking beyond his immediate vicinity, his family, his school and all that, he generally is you know, happy with the identity that he has got. I am the son and daughter of Mr. and Mrs. So and so. I belong to this city or this state or this country. I belong to this faith or this community. I have this, this, this thing. I am a brother or a sister to my sibling. I am a nephew or niece to my aunts and uncles. Everywhere, there is a clear understanding 
and even if the child is not very happy with some of them generally he does not protest he looks at it as a necessary evil and moves on when the child comes to adolescence the child suddenly starts questioning what is my identity where am i headed what am i going to be i am moving on let us say from school to college i am being asked to select subjects i am being asked to prepare for entrance exams and take up some you know professional courses what suits me most what should i go by what direction should i give to my life same thing with relationships you know, up till now i used to think that dad mom know everything now when i am looking around and especially when i am looking at google aunty i realize that dad and mom don't know anything at all so what sort of relationship do i share with them what sort of relationships i have with my own sibling if i have one of course a lot of families have single childs now but if i have siblings if i have cousins what sort of equation i have with uh, them what's my equation with teachers primary school teachers i are like gods and angels whatever they say is fine i will take it even if i don't like it sometimes even if i feel some teacher is strict i accept it by the time i have come to high school all my teachers have suddenly become stupid and mentally retarded i don't know who made them teachers i don't know what they are trying to do with uh, me and why does that happen because i have moved into that phase where i am questioning my identity the same thing with what does it mean to be a boy what does it mean to be a girl why am i attracted to the opposite sex in certain cases why am i attracted to the same sex or why am i not attracted at all why is it that i don't have a boyfriend all my friends seem to have boyfriends and the only one left over without a boyfriend am i incomplete in certain ways am i a failure competition everybody is going for jee and neat coaching and all that if i say that i want to be a journalist or a lawyer or a whatever in hospitality people look down on uh, me but nobody tells me what is right and uh, wrong nobody guides me so that is this phase okay now what i have always believed in is if a child when he or she comes to adolescence is given the right inputs the right guidance the right hand holding including the right encouragement to develop autonomy and take the right decisions when the child starts doing that you can say that the adolescence is over and the child has moved into adult life you will come across so many people who have crossed that 18 legal adulthood 20 which has taken them past uh, teenage maybe 25 30 but they still behave like adolescents they still have the same doubts am i in the right career what am i doing here why did i not do that why can't i switch over and do something else how is my relationship going why is it that i am having fights with my old parents why is it that i am getting cut off from my siblings or even my own spouse why is it that i am having difficulty handling my own uh, children all these areas if a person is constantly questioning and having doubts and getting confused then you know that the child has not had a successful adolescence and the child is not moved safely into the realm of being a responsible adult he or she may be highly educated may be having a very good job may be having respect in society but at the emotional level at the close interpersonal level the person is still struggling the person has still got so many question marks so i thought today let us talk about you know how we can help adolescents move successfully to become you know adults what they need to do is as you know when a child becomes an adult he has to be independent he is no longer under the tutelage of his parents or even his teachers and all that he may or she may take up a job may even move out of the house may go to a new city may go for higher studies to a different country 
when all these things are happening, what is it that this person needs to master so that you can say that this person has now successfully become a young adult? What that person needs to do is to learn what we call as basic life skills. The child needs to know how to handle a lot of situations. Of course, World Health Organization has listed out 10 life skills, which is what we use even in our training programs and all that. The 10 basic life skills, which I also couple up into two, that is, you know, communication and relationships, self-awareness and empathy with the others, stress management, management of uh, emotions, interpersonal relations, uh, uh, decision making, problem solving. This is what WHO has uh, given us and they have laid it out wonderfully and we have also, I've even written a workbook on life skills to help people to understand and work towards life skills. But today, I'll take you a little further into some of the life skills which are not listed by World Health Organization but which are equally important for a person to smoothly transition into adulthood. So I asked Anis to make it into a small slide which you will be seeing right now. The need to learn life skills for that transition from teenage to adulthood. One of the most important in today's uh, area is for successful entry into adult life. What an adolescent needs to learn is relationships. How do you manage the change in relationships that takes place? The career. Am I happy with my career? Am I, am I disgruntled? Am I not getting along with my boss or my colleagues most of the uh, time? Have I got a long term vision? Can I see where my career is headed five years, 10 years, 30 years from uh, now? Sexuality. I am now an adult. How do I deal with my sexual relationships? How do I form a stable partnership with my partner? How do I feel happy and contented with whatever I am having in the uh, life in terms of gender, in terms of sexuality, in terms of romantic love, all these things have to be learned. It's not as simple as A and B fell in love with each other and lived happily ever after. It doesn't work out uh, uh, that way. So if you go a little deeper, there's another slide that I have made about this need, you know, what you need to uh, learn on a regular uh, uh, basis. Here is Anish showing you. She does a very good job of putting in some nice, cute graphics also along with the uh, slide. And she will show you things like, you know, young adults, for example, when you transit from uh, adolescence into adult uh, life. No, that's a previous one. For example, the issues that you need to, you know, face would be something like handling money. A lot of young adults have too much money on their hands. Some of them don't have money. They're struggling. They've studied, they've got qualifications, but they're still struggling for money. They have loans, they have to pay. Another issue that comes in with the spurt of youth is risk taking behavior. I'm all charged up. My hormones are all activated. So why can't I take this risk? Why can't I quit this and do this? Why can't I go into that? One more area of this generation, which is of serious concern is that they cannot delay gratification. They want everything right now and it's not their fault, let me tell you. It is because they are programmed into that. The media, the advertising people, the people bombarding them with trying to sell them something 
they are all telling them that you should get what you want right now whether it's a house whether it's a car whether it's you know a good dinner whatever it is they are not learning how to delay gratification and a lot of it is to do with what we call as social media addiction today i am not going deep into this but this by itself is a major issue of concern addiction not only to social media but to all aspects of addiction to the screen as we call it or some people refer to it as technology addiction incidentally world health organization has declared you know online gaming addiction to online gaming as a mental disorder which needs to be cured but you will be amazed at the type of the volumes that happen in online gaming it is in tens of thousands of crores companies are laughing all the way to the bank they are making so much money in online gaming which the poor people who run some cricket academy or football coaching or basketball you know uh, courts and all that they don't make 10% of what these people are making with negligible uh, investment but social media addiction particularly is very very strong and a person cannot move into successful adult life unless he have learned how to balance the use of social media we have spoken about it earlier some day maybe i'll again take it up because it's an issue of deep concern to me and what is this leading to it is leading to things like loneliness which i have been constantly cautioning is the biggest epidemic to hit mankind more than any covid or any other thing loneliness is one of the biggest addiction the rate of suicide is constantly going up and the average age of people committing suicide is steadily going down younger and younger people are committing suicide and also please remember one person commits suicide and dies there are 50 to 100 people today who are feeling suicidal that is the proportion and that is what you know leads to all these addictions and this and that going right up to unfulfilled adoption which keeps uh, unfulfilled uh, adolescence which keeps the person immature you will if you look around you you will feel, find certain people whose chronological age may be 30 40 50 whatever it is but their behavior is what we call as childish not to be confused with child like they are not that innocent naive child like in fact they are very they become very crafty they start becoming so self focused that they cannot tolerate anyone they want the whole world to revolve around them they cannot handle defeat setbacks they don't know how to maintain mature and balanced relationships and that is what happens if the child has not been given proper inputs during those adolescent years which are somewhere between 10 to 20 years of uh, age if that has been neglected as is happening please look around and see at that sensitive age when the child should be preparing for adult life his elders are only preparing him for the so called competitive exams there are times when parents have told me that i am very worried about my child and very deeply concerned can you please counsel him and i say yes then they say no no weekdays is out of question because directly from college or whatever you know he goes to such and such tuition and that lasts very late and so i can't bring him on weekdays can i bring him on sunday no sorry we don't work on sundays we need at least one week one day off in the week right so sundays we are closed saturday yeah i was thinking i'll bring on saturday but they are having some weekly test you know they are having some extra classes and something 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 so saturday is also right now it is not possible now where are your priorities in life 
if you are concerned about an adolescent and if you want to do something good for that adolescent, what are your priorities? Is your priority to see to it that you pay lakhs of rupees and get him into the most popular coaching center who keeps giving all sorts of false claims about how many of their students got into IITs and how many got into MBBS. Let me tell you straight away that if all the claims made by these people were right, then IITs would probably be admitting 20 lakh or 50 lakh students. But the intake into IITs is not even 10,000 in the whole country. And there are 20 lakh people preparing for that so-called IIT exam. Now, we as adults, we as responsible adults, whether you are a parent, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a counselor, social worker, or just a responsible citizen, don't we owe it to the adolescents to see that they have take this smooth transition into adult life. We have that as our goal. Theoretically speaking, logically speaking, that's what we do. But practically, what do we do? Somewhere we get caught in that trap. We get influenced by our peers. We tell others that teenage is a peer age. Teenagers are always influenced by their peers. But let me tell you, adults succumb to peer pressure more than teenagers. What will the neighbors say? What will society say? What will I tell my in-laws? That becomes more important and that becomes the factor for deciding what the adolescent should do and should not do, rather than what is good for you. How will you grow? How will you evolve? How will you develop that maturity and that, you know, balance in your uh, life? Let me tell you what I've always been telling you. Parenting is not a popularity contest. Parenting should not be done for my own ego. I am doing a very mediocre job, so I want my son to become an IES officer. Nobody in my family is a doctor, so I want my daughter to become a doctor. This is how we mislead children, crush them. And that transition which should have taken place smoothly from adolescence to adulthood, this gets uh, struck off. My colleagues, uh, uh, Purnima and Jennifer, did a quick, small little role play for you. Of course, this is a little too over-enthusiastic a mother, but you will find mothers and even fathers like that. So just have a look at this video of how a conversation is taking place between a mother and her daughter who has finished her studies and has moved into so-called adult life by taking up a job. And you just tell me what is your problem, yeah? I pack lunch for you, I get up in the morning, everything is done, but you can't eat your lunch and you are binging something. Ma, I'm just not a kid, Amma. I'm, I'm working in MNC. So whatever I like, I would like to eat, Amma. And you will eat all junk food and say, Amma, I will eat whatever I want to eat. What is this work you are doing? Was I not working? Was I not your age at 22 years? Ma, you were not working, Amma. But I'm working in an MNC company. You know, they pay me 50,000 salary. But you know how much of work pressure I'm having? I also used to do work at your age. Amma, you were taking tuition classes, Amma. But I'm not doing that, no? So now you're going to criticize that I was jobless at, uh, you know, this age of 22 and you are earning so much. I was already, my parents were looking out for marriage and so many things were happening during my time. What else you are doing? There is no, you know, work at home you have to do, no laundry, nothing. Just go to office, binge, eat some pizza, pasta, leave the dapa and come back. What is your problem in life? Amma, you know more than that my boss is pressurizing Amma to attend for parties, team meetings, meeting the, uh, attending for all this, you know Amma, I am not able to follow my passion. 
am not able to attend the guitar classes, Amma. Please understand. And what more reasons you have? You know, along with this, Rakesh is continuously telling that I am not able to speak to him and rest of the things, Amma. He is a very good friend of yours. Why is he unnecessarily interfering and you know, telling so many things? Amma, he was my friend. But now he is not the friend, Amma. We are just more a step forward. We like each other, Amma. So what does that mean now? We want to get married, Amma. Get married? You are just 22 years of age and you want to get married? So what, Amma? 22 years. You also got married at 22, no? I'm not a baby, Amma. Oh my God! I really don't know where this whole thing is going. This is, this is just too much, you know. These people just don't understand anything. They are earning. They have no responsibility. Let's see. God only save us. Yes. But God also helps those who help themselves, right? If you are a concerned adult, you cannot pass the buck to God. You have to take the responsibility. And believe me, if you take that responsibility, you will be doing a great favor. Not only on that one child who is growing up and moving into adult life, but maybe to his or her, her whole family. To the way that person does parenting and how their children get affected. So many such things happen. Talking about careers, you know how fast careers are changing. I often tell parents, you are so worried about what career your child will take up. But the career that your child will finally take up has not been invented yet. That's the rate at which change is taking place in the world of work. Everything new is coming. But if we are helping a child go through adolescence in a stable, practical and positive manner, the child will be able to learn how to take the right decisions, whether it's a decision of which courses or career to take up, whether it's a decision of which job and which type of organization to work for, whether it's a destination, I mean, a decision of choosing a life partner, whether it's a decision of facing difficult relationships, unpleasantness that is bound to happen in any close uh, relationships. That is what you, our aim is, to help these people grow up into youngsters who are not carried away by the herd mentality, who are not desperately waiting and cannot delay gratification, they want everything uh, uh, now, who have a vision to look forward at 20 when the child is entering into adulthood, very likely the younger generation is going to live to 90 or 100 years the way longevity and healthcare is improving. So the child should be, start evaluating and looking forward to the next 60, 70 years of his or her life. We have to lay those strong foundations based on which the child can do whatever the child does, whether that child finally lands up at IIT, IIM, MIT or does MBBS or becomes a great lawyer or whatever it is that is secondary. What is important is where the life, uh, the child is headed and have we empowered that child as he or she steps into adulthood. So that's what I wanted to convey to you. As usual, I'd like to take a one minute break and Purnima is here, whom you saw just now in that wonderful role play. And she will just update you on what's happening and I'll be back. Good morning. Ali was just speaking about the um, importance of careers, right? And maybe I'll just quickly try and rotate this camera to show you some of our parents who are here to get the aptitude uh, assessment done for their bacha parties, okay? 
Yeah. You all want to tell a hi? Hi. <laughs> yeah. It's really so assuring uh, for us, you know, to know that uh, they're all over here and they are getting the career assessment. Uh, most of you must be knowing, right? The CET exams are going to be on. NEET is already done. And uh, so many want to do different you know, kind of uh, courses for which you have so many entrance exams, group discussions, interviews. There's so much they have to go through. And there is always that um, sword hanging on your head. Am I doing right? Am I doing wrong? Am I doing too good, too bad, too much, too less? So many things. And at that point of time, that's where there are tools available. So uh, career assessment, which is a holistic career assessment, is one of the very good tools available for you to know where your potential is. We do a lot of things because of our intelligence, right? I don't like history, but I'm intelligent enough to quickly go through when the battles happened, who, where is the Chanakya dynasty, Chola dynasty, and I'll pass and I'll get 90%. That does not mean that history is my potential. It means that I may be breezing through history because of my intelligence. So we'll have to help these children understand, you know, sometimes their uh, friends will uh, coax them. Hey, bakano, hogana, same class, we'll be together, we'll continue. But friendship is different, career is uh, different. So friends, you can always remain being into different careers and choosing that career which is appropriate for you, right? So uh, this is also that time when we have a lot of um, parents who come with their uh, children and they do a lot of things. Basically, what we do is we give them different scenarios where they write something, draw something, sketch something, circle something, uh, delete something, calculate something, different, different things keep uh, happening. So that is uh, about the career uh, counseling that happens at uh, Panjara. Through the year it uh, happens, but this is also that time when 10th and 12th are determining years. Na? Children uh, really have to start thinking. And as Ali mentioned, that your career remains with you till you are 75 to 85 years. So it's a good idea to plan right now. And that's what we do at uh, Banjara. Also, sometimes apart from careers, there could be you know, some emotional issues, behavioral issues some school rejection, some you know, different things that parents may face as challenges from their children. For that, we do what is called as PSE, Psychosocio Educational Assessments, to help parents you know, understand that uh, possibly what could be going wrong with the children or what can be done right and tweak it. So these are some uh, two things which I thought I wanted to tell you and also introduce you to our uh, parents team who is available here in the studio so they had some time while the children are doing their assessments and they are here with us and uh, with that we have ali who is going to answer all your questions have a nice day bye take care Yes, I'm back and I'm happy to see a lot of nice, interesting questions and comments that have come. Oh, uh, Purnima just left. Sri Devi has said awesome role play with a lot of very nice emojis for her. I'll show it to her later. Asha says, on one side, we can appreciate that a lot of awareness is there, even among adolescents. But at the same time, is the mind getting perverted as decision making? values and ethics, unhealthy competition and various other factors are looming at large. Yes, Sasha, I agree with you. These are issues which have to be tackled. It is a growing menace. We are not realizing how difficult it is. So many youngsters, as you saw in the role play, the girl complaining to her mother that while I'm working in an MNC just after my graduation and I've got this fancy salary, but the way I'm being treated, the stress that is coming in, a simple thing like I can't go and you know continue with my guitar lessons. See what sort of a life situation she is at the young age of 22. And that is where 
it is our collective responsibility to help all these children or youngsters, I would say, right? Surekha, always a pleasure to have you. Surekha says, how can we help a teenager move beyond the negative expectations of his critical parents into becoming a confident, self-trusting, independent uh, adult? You saw a glimpse of the role play which Purnima and Jennifer did of a critical adult who doesn't appreciate what the child is going through and is being critical of small, small things like you know, instead of eating the tiffin which she is making and getting up at five o'clock in the morning and giving to the child, the child goes and has pizza or noodles or whatever uh, it is. Now, we have to understand that those are not priorities in life. We meaning parents, responsible people. But supposing they don't, as Surika rightly said, there are a lot of parents who are critical, who maybe with good intention, but they put down their uh, children. They cause damage to the children. If you are a concerned adult, whether you are a colleague, whether you are a counselor, whether you are a teacher, whatever you are to that youngster, you can at least to some extent balance it out by giving, starting with positive strokes to the young person, telling the person some good things about himself or herself, boosting the self-esteem. This is the time when a person has to have very good self-esteem to face the cruel adult world outside for the first time. If that can be done, you will be able to at least partially counter the negativity which that person is receiving from her elders. Vinita says, it's so, so true, Ali. What we just saw, many moms and teenagers of young adults are going through these situations. I feel we must just make them responsible so that they are able to take the right decisions. Yes, two of the 10 life skills that I've <clears throat> mentioned a World Health Organization are, you know, problem solving and decision making. They go as a pair. If you learn how to take decisions at the right time for the right reasons in the right way, you will be able to tackle the worst of problems. You should, in fact, even know when it is time to tackle, when is it time to move off and let things move a little more before you come back to solving that problem or whatever that it is. So we have to, this is a continuous process. It's not a one-time uh, thing. As long as you are concerned about a youngster, as long as you have that thing in your mind that I want to create a better world when I become very old and infirm and incapable of looking after myself or contributing in any way to society, I should leave behind or have behind me some very capable, mature and balanced youngsters who are going to be ruling the world. Roshan says, thanks to my parents for bringing me up so well that I have faced major challenges all by myself without any help. I am able to solve other people's issues very smoothly. And so my relationships are improving and increasing. Anybody says hi to me, continues my friendship and becomes my good friend. I wish all of us could do that, isn't it? It's a wonderful feeling reaching out, helping others in times of need. Thanks once again to my dear parent for bringing me up on the right way. Yes, Roshan has been very lucky. Many of us have been lucky, but some of us have not been so lucky. Some of us may have had parents like what you saw in the role play. Obviously, the mother loves the child. She has all the good intentions to the child, but the method that she is using is wrong. So if you are in touch with other parents, please help them to understand that good intentions do not get results. It is the method of what you do, particularly in emotional areas like child upbringing, de developing better relationships and all these things have to be done in the right way. Thankfully, today we know what are the right ways. We know how emotional intelligence can be built up. We know how to work on the life skills. We have been given all this on a platter, which was not available 30 years back. So let us make the best use of it. Navina says, I have a 14 year old son. He is right now struggling with low self-esteem, 
saying he feels he has not achieved and not done anything for his parents and grandparents. And also shared that he doubts and doesn't feel he is mature like his peers. I tried to talk to him at length and reminded him of instances where he did help and so on. But he says, what's the big deal in it? Then I tried to highlight his uniqueness, how sensitive he is and how good interpersonal skills and also helped him to find so many things. But what happens is that sometimes as parents, we are telling a lot of good things to the children. But remember, communication between parent and child should be spelt. L-I-S-T-E-N. So, Navina and all your parents who are facing similar situations with your growing children, stop telling them. Keep asking them. And listen to them thoroughly. Okay, you feel that you have low self esteem You feel you have not achieved anything. You are comparing yourself with others and you think others have done better. Can you elaborate? Can you tell me more about it? Can you tell me in what way you feel inadequate or incomplete? The more a person talks, the more his or her mind starts putting the thoughts in order. Particularly when the listener is totally non-judgmental. The listener is not interrupting or questioning, allowing the child to think. When the child has spoken, 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 tell the child, okay, you think it over how you can change it. If you feel genuinely that I'm not an achiever, I'm a failure, I will respect your feelings. But now let's talk about how you can reverse that. And you come out with it. We'll sit next Sunday and we'll have another discussion. And on that Sunday, again, listen, listen, listen. It works. Yes. Surekha says, if a teenager is raised with no rules at all and with no supporting structure, then he is going to be indisciplined, confused, and even entitled. Very true, Surekha. There has to be a very well understood balance. There are teenagers who are given all the liberty. And as she rightly pointed out, Surekha very rightly said, no supporting structure, no guidelines, <clears throat> no norms, precedents, no role models, then the child is definitely going to be indisciplined, confused, etc. Isn't it? On the other hand, a child who is straight jacketed, everything is told to him or her. All decisions are taken on behalf of the youngster. The child will not learn how to be autonomous and how to can run his or her own life. So there are times when you have to let go and be loose. There are times when you have to be a little firm. And you should know which are those times. Right? Madhu says, thanks to you, sir and Banjara. With due respect, I learned to handle both my teenage sons alone as a single mother and made them independent to take decisions and live life happily. At the same time, have confidence. Thank you, sir. No, Madhu. You should not be thanking me or anybody else. You should be thanking yourself. There's no doubt about it that single parenting is not just double the task. It is five times the task. Because every child, even as he grows up and becomes an adult, needs fathering and mothering. And if you, as a single parent... Any one of you as single parents have taken up this responsibility and have done this. Hats off to you. I know how difficult it is. I have interacted and I have observed and I have seen from close uh, uh, quarters how they uh, do things. And as Madhu further says, now they are grown up and taking care of their job and family and at the same time taking care of relationships too. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that the ultimate that an elder, a parent, or a teacher can aspire for? To watch with pride 
the tiny little ones who are just growing up or who are going through that, you know, ups and downs and turmoil of uh, adolescence and teenage, if you look at them today as mature adults who are taking care of their lives, who are taking care of their families, I think there is no greater reward for us. We are creating a chain of events. As I told you earlier also, you help one growing youngster, you are actually helping an entire family. There will be so many long-term uh, uh, benefits. Navina says, thank you so much, Ali, for that wonderful guidance. I was actually asking him all types of questions and asked him how we can work together as a team. Pointed out areas, asked him how he could deal with it. But yes, would definitely sit with him more and listen to him more. Just prod a little bit here and there. No, ma, I can't think of anything. I am so stupid. I am so useless. I can't think. I think you are not that stupid. I think given time and given the opportunity, you can come out with some answers, son. I'll give you time. Today is what? Saturday 20th. Let this whole week go past. You have Sunday tomorrow. You have the whole week. Next Sunday 28th, can we sit down? Just you and me alone. And you are going to tell me what you have done so far. That is what is important, right? Ah, Madhu says, I didn't know anything and no one there to help me except Banjara. Thanks, Madhu. That's a very, very warm compliment that you have given us. And we accept it with humility. Okay. Sri Devi says, thanks to Banjara Academy where I did my DCS. When my daughter was in her 10th standard, and now I feel so blessed for the holistic development of my daughter, where she posted the best gift ever, her graduation event YouTube link for us from abroad for our marriage day. This coming month end, she got a fantastic job there in USA in a best firm where she can come and work from here also later whenever she wants. And she always makes me proud for carving her own path as she chooses. Please note the last sentence of what Sri Devi said. She is making me proud for carving her own path she chose. That should be the bottom line of every responsible adult, not just a parent. Right, Surekha says, how can we nurture autonomy in teenagers so that they learn to respect their independence and power of choice in adulthood? Yes, as you know very well, Surekha, the first thing is self-esteem. If I feel I am worthy, I will automatically make efforts. I will start taking responsibility. I will start doing things. The second is somebody to listen to the child. When the child has doubts, Encourage. Tell the child, even if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. You took up this course or you made this friend or you tried out this game. It didn't work out. Doesn't matter. That's how you move on with it, right? Okay. Dipti says, Dear Ali, this is not in line with the discussion happening here. But I want to share my gratitude for this live session. I was so stressed out and my thoughts were all over the place because I have to make certain decisions. And listening to you in the comments here has calmed my nervous system and stopped the flow of useless thought. Thank you once again. Thank you, Dipti, for acknowledging this. And people like you will always move forward. You will always find some people to give you a little support here and there because you're open to it, isn't it? Hmm. Surekha says, inappropriate praise can be as harmful to a teenager's self-esteem as inappropriate criticism. Yes, Surekha, I agree with you 100%. People who keep, you know, really pushing up that children, you are a wonderful child, you are the best, you are wonderful. Generalized praise, unnecessary, you know, comments, flattery can be more damaging than even criticism. Praise your child as much as you can. But do it specifically. You have done this wonderful thing. You have achieved this. Even a small thing like after dinner, you picked up all the three plates and put it in the kitchen. You're so sensitive. You're looking at others' needs also. You have such a sweet smile on your face. 
the way you handle that uh, argument you had with X, Y, Z, I appreciate how you managed to remain so calm. That is the type of appreciation that every youngster needs. Roshan says, leaving my daughter alone in Hyderabad when I was doing my DCS in Bangalore itself was a learning experience and the best way to deal with life skills. And I will add to that, Roshan, teaching life skills to your daughter, who for the first time in her life had to take care of everything. Of course, you had made all the arrangements for her, but still she was independent. She handled her own life for one year. And that is something which you have taught her and given her as a gift which she will, you know, have for the rest of her life. Navina says, as learned from Banjara, tried giving him more genuine positive strokes and encourage him and help him in boosting self-esteem. This really helped him. And he finally said, yes, I have certain good qualities too, and acknowledged it and also stated an instant where he was sensitive and other friends were insensitive to another person. These are the small, small things that we need to pick up. Not that you stood first in your class or you got admission into this top university and all that. That is there. Yes, it is an achievement. You should praise it. But if you can learn to appreciate, praise, acknowledge these small gestures. He was sensitive when the others, uh, other friends were insensitive. I think that's a great quality you have given to your child, Navina. You must be proud of it and you must continuously encourage it. Surika says, how do we erase this thought pattern? Since I am bad, I will behave badly. Start off with an, uh, acknowledging, okay, if you feel that you are bad, I will not argue. You are a mature person, so you know how to judge yourself, so you say you are bad. I just want to know, in what areas are you bad? What are the actions of yours which makes you feel that you are bad? How did you come to this conclusion? What is happening recently? What has happened earlier? Do you think you are the only bad person? Can you look around and show me one, two, three other bad people? No, you can't. And how is it that you are the only bad person that God chose you to be bad and everybody else to be good? Slowly, gently turn the tables around and help the person to change these, you know, thinking pattern, the wrong beliefs, the disruptions and irrationality of thoughts. There are a lot of ways we do it in counseling, psychotherapy, CBT, REBT, all these things we do, but that is where somebody has to really go for deep this thing. We can all do all these simple things. You don't need to be a psychologist or a scholar to be able to handle youngsters in these small, small uh, manners. That's all that it entails. So, Anis, if you feel that we have come to the end of the comments and questions, I will not hold you further. I will let you go and I will continue my preparation for next Saturday on 27th, which is a review of how the lockdown impacted us. Believe me, day in and day out, I'm dealing with people, families, children, old people who are still suffering from the impact of the lockdown, even though it has been months and months and months after the lockdown was lifted. So I'm doing a continuous research on it. I will present you with my findings. I will be open to listening to you. You also can give us thought to it, look around and see you know, how the lockdown impacted you or your loved ones or your neighbors or other people whom you are dealing with. And we should have a very meaningful discussion next Saturday, 27th May at 11 o'clock. See you. Bye-bye. One more uh, comment has come. That is Navina's. If I have to start encouraging my child to help to learn basic motoring skills. Yes, go ahead, Navina. There are so many things and everything has to be done by trial and error. Everything has to be done by trying out. Something helps, something does not. Like you yourself have said, Navina, he is still struggling. Yes, in certain things he is struggling, but that's not a failure. Try something else. Work on something else. Highlight the areas where his struggle has actually brought him, uh, you know, results. That is how the whole thing goes. And it's been a wonderful time with you all. 
I will be looking forward to our session on 27. That is the next Saturday.